Hi everyone! I am a proud owner of a few Atari ST, and like many of us, if I like the look and feel of my original 12-inch color monitor, I've also been looking for a solution to hook them up to modern monitors and TVs. However, not all Ataris have an RF modulator, and when they do, let's face it, the quality is not quite there, especially with modern digital displays. In this video, I'll remind the various Atari ST variations and what video signals are available for each. Then I'll go over a few options to connect modern display devices for each of them with the pros and the cons. Let's begin with the naming convention. On the Atari ST series, the first number is the RAM size. 520 for the early models with half a meg, 1040 for the 1 meg, for example. Then the classic ST, acronym for a 1632-bit capability of the 68K microprocessor. And finally, the superscript letters shows the specific of the unit, sometimes showed on the front label, sometimes on the bottom sticker. The F stands for internal floppy drive, as opposed to the early models, for example, that had an external floppy drive. And M tells if you have a modulator. It means it is generating both a composite signal available on the monitor connector and an RF output with a channel selector, making it possible to connect to any TV through the tuner. However, if you don't have the modulator, you can only use an Atari monitor. Finally, an E stands for enhanced and has a few improvements, especially in the graphic processing power and sound playback capabilities. However, the easiest way to find out if your Atari has a modulator is to look for the RF connector on the backside. Now, let's recap. The native options available are, for all Atari ST, an original Atari color monitor for low and medium resolution. The low resolution being 320 by 200 with 16 colors and the medium resolution of 640 by 200 with 4 colors, both available at 50 and 60 Hz. The second native option is an original Atari black and white monitor for the high resolution, which is 640 by 400 at 70 Hz. Also, the European market had a SCART cable adapter. Now, for the Atari with a modulator, we're seeing an added composite signal and an added RF signal. As you can see, we're nowhere close to having modern video standards here. So, I started digging on the nature of the signals available and see if we could convert any of those into something more usable. When looking at the monitor pinouts, we can see the red, green and blue colors, as well as horizontal and vertical sync signals. Those are typical signals used on VGA monitors. I do believe we will have more luck exploiting those raw signals rather than the composite. After reading many stories online, I decided to give all solutions a try. I bought a bunch of 13-pin DIN monitor connectors and VGA connectors. Based on online recommendations, I also got those converters. The first one is a SCART to HDMI converter I bought from eBay for about $13. The second one is a SCART to HDMI upscaler I bought from Amazon for about $55. However, the third one was not mentioned anywhere in any forums, but I thought I'd give it a try for $17. It's a VGA to HDMI converter. Now let's review those. First off, we'll start with a passive solution. It only requires to wire the monitor out to a VGA connector. No active components. It's the cheapest way and gives extremely good results, but it only works in monochrome high resolution, as the lower color resolution have too much of a low frequency and are not supported on anything made in the past 30 years. This is the schematic. As you can see, we're simply feeding the same monochrome signal to all three RGB colors, and shorting the monochrome detect pin to force the high resolution mode on the Atari. I'd say this is an ideal solution for any productivity software, such as MIDI trackers or word processing, quite often only compatible with monochrome mode anyways, leveraging the high resolution. I then got this $13 converter off of eBay that took about 6 months to get here after the first one got lost in transit. Anyways, for this one, you'll also need a SCART, also called Peritel, connector. This is the pinout from the original Atari cable used to connect this device. SCART is actually a neat vintage European audio-video standard compatible with many signals such as composite, S-video, RGB signals, stereo audio, and even a trigger signal all through the same cable. The support for RGB is what gave me hope in this adapter. Looking at the results though, I sadly discovered that it converted the composite signal from the SCART instead of the RGB signals, resulting in ugly washed out colors with poor contrast. Even worse, on my 520ST the output was only black and white for some reason with vertical artifacts. 
I would definitely stay away from this piece of junk for the Atari ST, but it might be useful for older generation consoles that only had composite outputs. After the disaster of the cheap converter, I purchased an upscaler out of frustration for about $55. This one was more promising as it was announced of being compatible with the RGB, and it is. The same monitor to SCART cable can be used. I was pleasantly surprised by the results. It takes a few seconds to boot up, then you are welcome with an on-screen display showing you the selected input, the format, and the output resolution. It also auto-detects if the input is PAL or NTSC, and supports both the low and medium Atari resolutions. You can even change the output upscale resolution by a simple push of a button. Unlike what the label makes you believe, you can actually cycle through even more resolutions. 800 by 600, 1024 by 768, 1280 by 1024, and of course 720p and 1080p. The image is quite clear, with good color reproduction and contrast. However, on the downside, it has a few quirks, probably due to the upscaling. First thing I noticed is it is inducing a delay of a few milliseconds. Not particularly annoying, but still present. The other visual artifact is the brightness overshoot, visible on highly contrasted areas such as letter contours. Another slightly visible artifact is with moving objects, similar to a badly done deinterlacing processing, it almost looked like there is a video compression at some point. Anyways, if you're interested in exploring the video processing capabilities and architecture of this device, let me know in the comments. Finally, and that's probably the worst artifact, it seems that some Atari graphical hacks are not handled properly and is causing the image to bounce. Keep in mind that the usable display area of the Atari is quite smaller than the screen. So the programming community had to be quite creative to circumvent the hardware limitations and get more screen used. I believe the weird timing from those hacks are the cause for this, but might as well be my monitor. If you have a better explanation, let me know. Finally, nobody seemed to have attempted this last solution yet, so keep watching to see the results. Realizing how close the Atari RGB HV signals were compared to the VGA signals, and after seeing some success on the monochrome VGA cable, I tried rewiring a new color pass-through VGA cable, without merging the three colors. And one of my oldest VGA monitors started to have a warped image in place of the usual out-of-sync message. So I wasn't something and I still decided to give this tiny VGA to HDMI device a try. After all, it was only $17. Well, you guessed it, that is probably the best solution out there. I had all the perks from the upscaler without the issues. Crystal clear image, perfect contrast, perfect colors, no image processing delays, no artifacts, no overshoot. I was really excited about the results and I tried the low and medium resolution, both PAL and the NTSC worked like a charm. I will definitely recommend to give the solution a try before going for a SCART upscaler. One caveat though, the output resolution is the same as the VGA input and I'm suspecting the solution is quite dependent on the resolution that your TV can accept. In conclusion, this is the summary of my tests. And this is just based on my personal experience and preferences. With no surprises, the VGA adapter really gets the first position for me for its low cost and high performance. The crisp and colorful render was just flawless. In second position, I was actually quite hesitant as it's almost a tie, but I have to go with the upscaler, which is providing a decent image quality, but the price and the numerous artifacts are quite not cutting it for me. Also, the goal was to provide a solution with modern standards, but I would say if you have an Atari with a modulator and you're fine with the composite cable, I would really choose this option over the upscaler. In third position, I will have to pick the passive black and white VGA adapter for its great results and cost, despite being only black and white. I would stay away from the latest option at all cost. It is just not worthy of what the Atari ST has to offer, but might work for older consoles. Here we go. Just for fun, here's a comparison of the various signals you can get out of an Atari. Hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave a comment and ask questions or share your thoughts. And if you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing to help this channel grow. I'll leave you with some 16-bit goodness. Have a great day.